Good morning. It's um, significantly colder out today. We had some blowing and drifting snow overnight and it's now frozen solid. So Phil scraping the driveways again. I got some uh, figuring to do. I think we're gonna run to Menards and get parts for installing my heater and stuff down there. And I'm, I'm wishy-washy back and forth all over on how exactly to do this and which way to orient it and whether it's better to run gas line or electric wires. I, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure stuff out. So I'm gonna go down there and look around. Hey, if you guys want yourself a Borderview Farms hat, keep your ears warm when it's cold out, head over to farmfocus.com and go grab one. And while we're on the subject of telling you to do things, like the video, subscribe. We'll get that out of the way right at the beginning. All right, let's go. All right, so if you're just catching up, I bought this radiant tube heater that um, we're gonna install in here. We're gonna go right down the peak with it and uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get it installed. So here's my, here's my dilemmas, right? Okay, so my gas line is right outside that corner. That's where my riser is coming from my tank. That's where we've gotta come up. My plan was to come in right there as well, put the regulator there and come in. To get from there up across the top, over, up, and back out to where that that burner is going to mount. I mean, we're 90 feet just right there. We're 35 from the corner to the center. Up another, what, 5 or 10 feet, and then back out 15. We're pushing 150 feet on that gas line from the regulator to where the burner is going to be. I cannot do that with 3 quarter inch, the CSST flexible. Um, it won't supply enough gas pressure there or not enough BTUs per hour, whatever. Um, even if going to one inch won't supply enough. In fact, the three quarter is just barely half of what we need for the 175,000 to run the burner. So that isn't gonna work. Black pipe, smooth inside, a little bit bigger inside diameter. It would actually work, I think, to run that distance with three quarter inch black pipe. Um, but that's a real pain in the butt might have to be done. The other issue is my electric is right here, right? So we can run up and put a plug up there for electric, for the heater, no problem from right here. If we put the burner on the other end, so we're closer to our gas line, we gotta run electric all the way down there. <sighs> a little bit more of a pain. Plus, I have to vent this heater. My plan is to go right out through the sidewall and I would love for it to be on that end rather than this end. I just, it would be cleaner on the outside to be down there, plus, these tube heaters, um, it's 60 feet long of heat, of, of tube for heating, but it's gonna be more intense on the burner end than it is on the far end. And I work over here. Like I want it to be warmer on this end. So it just makes more sense to have the burner down here. It's six of one, half dozen the other, whether you run gas lines or electric lines, but it would be a little bit easier for me to run um, the gas line than the electric line. It's just a matter of getting it big enough. and. Oh, I'm just frustrated with it. So what I'm thinking about, I shouldn't even tell you guys this because safety police are going to be all over me, but you can buy uh, the, the second stage regulator. So right, there's a regulator on the tank, the LP tank outside that takes it from tank pressure down to like 10 PSI for your distribution lines, right? And then where your riser comes into your building, like I have one up at the house and where the one's going to be out there, you can't see anyway. Um, you put a second stage regulator that takes it down to 11 inches of water. That's the, the low pressure, a little below a half a PSI to uh, regulate the pressure coming in. You can, however, and 11 is the standard, and these heaters and your appliances, that's what they want. 11 inches of water of pressure um, pushing it into them. Uh, you can, however, buy a regulator that would go up to say 13 inches of water, which is a half a PSI or real close to it, uh, that would overcome some of my pressure loss from such a long run. So that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Manifold pressure 10, maximum inlet pressure. Ooh, that says 14. Minimum inlet pressure 11. Oh, sweet. Yeah, we're doing that. No question about it. We're just going to up the pressure a little bit. That'll give us the flow we need. I thought that was 11 was the max. It's 14 is the max. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, that's going to be our plan. We're just going to increase the regulator pressure just a little bit so that we can make a run. Um, I still don't think we can do it with the flex pipe. 
We still got to use black pipe, but we're going to do that. Now the question becomes, do I wait the month to get the 21 foot sticks of black pipe or do I just buy 10 foot sticks and do it? And then do we come in in that corner, go up and across here, or do we go across and up and right down the peak with the pipe? Or really we could come across any one of the roof purlins. Yeah, so we're figuring that out. 21 foot sticks would be handy because you got half as many connections, but you're going to have to cut some anyway. So maybe the 10 foot just as well. And I can do it now. Yeah. Well, we've had a successful shopping trip. Uh, I stopped at our local hardware store, literally local one, um, before I came here because <clears throat> I wanted to see if they could get the long sticks of black pipe quicker. Menards was a month out to get them. And they could get them for me by next Friday. And they were like 10 bucks a stick cheaper than Menards. That's a win. So I ordered uh, six of them, which should be enough for all that we needed long stuff. And then I came here for uh, the other stuff that they did not have or was way overpriced. Yeah, I know. Buy it all local. But it's okay. So we got some uh, electrical conduit. We got some 10 foot sticks of black pipe. We got all, of, uh, we, we got all the fittings that I know that we need, but I'm sure we did not get everything. So we'll get back. Well, the trees are pretty here. Bye boys. Bye. Bye, Good morning. Two hour delay for the boys today. Got a little snow and it got cold last night and everything's really slippery. So, Maddie, my wife, had some stuff going on this morning. So the boys hung out with me and now she's picking them up, taking them to school. What are we going to do today? We got to find something. All right. Well, uh, it is a Monday morning. Sorry, the boys had two hours. Yeah, we're getting into the swing of things here. Anyway, um, just a general overall of the week, things going on. I know I've got a meeting tomorrow morning. I might have one in the afternoon. I'm not sure. I think there's a seed truck coming sometime Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon. I'm judging FFA contests, so I've got that. On top of that, the weather is going to get super cold this week, like tomorrow uh, in the very low single digits, tomorrow morning, and high in like 15 degrees, something like that. I don't know. So it's cold. Uh, good and bad about that. Doesn't really make a difference to me. We still have some snow cover, so it's protecting the wheat, so we're fine from a that standpoint. Um, this truck is done. You know, we had to fix that strap on there last week. It's, it's not a big deal. We cleaned it up. So that can come out of here. I don't think we need the backhoe in here anymore. We're not really getting any more snow that we need to push. So there's that. Um, in the first half of February here, I've kind of got a lot of other stuff going on other than shop work. We're going to Louisville. We've got just little things like that. I've got some meetings going on. Um, so I'm trying to not start a really big project right now. And uh, the, the next big things that we need to do is start bringing planters in the shop, right? So we need to get the bean planter out, which is the first one because it's easier to get to um, and go through it and everything. And I'm debating, I think we're going to wait until after I get back from Louisville to do that. So we got to find some other little projects to do in the meantime. Uh, I do need to still get some parts taken off of that old tractor. We're kind of sort of working on that a little bit at a time. I've been waiting for Michael Jack to come up. He hasn't been here for a while. Um, but I want to get those taken somewhere, to the head and the block taken somewhere to get cleaned up. Uh, so I might do that today. Uh, and I think I'm going to bring my anhydrous tank in here. We're going to work on that a little bit. I got some of the valves that I need, not all of them. Hopefully the other ones come this week. But yeah, we're going to just odds and ends, small jobs, little things. Drool all over myself while I'm talking because, you know, that's how it works. And uh, shuffle some equipment around today. So we're going to take the backhoe out of here. I'm not going to worry about this truck for right now. I'll let Phil deal with that. But um, and we'll get that tank brought in. Hopefully, the forklift will move that tank. Our driveways are quite slippery today. It's being warmer yesterday, stuff sort of melting and then refreezing hard tonight. And it's, it's cold. Burr. Par for the course there. Uh huh. Should have known better. I almost made it. I almost made it. Now we got to pull the forklift out. Dang it. Tongue's frozen down. See, I gotta get the forklift in here to lift this thing up anyway. I should have should come this way. I would have been fine. Wasn't thinking. Gosh dang it. Go get the backhoe that we just put away. Ah. 
Oh, man. I think I can just, like, hook the bucket on the forks on the front, push it backwards a little bit. That would be the easiest. Nobody else is here, so I don't have any help. Ah, dang. Okay, well, I'm just trying to scrape the snow backwards, and we can't even do that with the backhoe. It's a little icy. All right. Now, yeah, this is going to be a challenge. Well, I managed to sneak in here so we can push straight on this uh, forklift, just use the bucket. So we got it on and in neutral. Should, yeah, I don't have enough traction with the backhoe to push it. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, well, we're moving. Oh, maybe. We got it to move. Okay, okay, I think that's free. Now stop. There we go, okay. All right, now, let's see if we can move some snow out of the way. Ah, we're moving, we're moving. Okay, this is a bad idea, but we're gonna go in on another angle and see if we can hook onto this thing. I'm sure that once we hook onto it, we won't be able to make it move, but we're gonna try anyway. I scraped the snow out of here. No, nope, not even close. And we're stuck. <laughs> oh, that was dumb. All right, not even worth fighting it. <laughs> okay, how am I gonna get this out of here? I, I guess I can just push it with the backhoe. I don't have a way to hook it up. The hitch. Ugh. Yeah, okay. Let's just get the forklift out of here. We'll figure something else out. Maybe we can push it with the backhoe somewhere where we can hook up to it. The forklift. I have no control though, I have no control. We'll try that. Yes, I am well aware that I could just get a pickup. Problem is with a pickup, I cannot back it into the barn. It's not very well at least. It's a lot easier with forklift. Okay, we might be able to get to it here. It's looking promising. More promising. Uh, if I can just. Ah. All right, we'll get her lined up. Now the question becomes can we move? And the answer is not really. Because we're on ice. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Go, go, go. Oh, we're gonna make it. All right, let's back this into shop. Okay, well, we got everything put back inside. So this tank has been sitting outside for what, two, three weeks now? No valves in it, airing out. It should be empty. Wonder if I can still smell anhydrous. <laughs> Not really, no. But we need to make sure that it is empty. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the plug in the bottom, and we're gonna fill it full of water. Just put a hose in there and let her go until it's full. It'll force all the air out, and then we'll pull the plug and we'll drain it. And uh, that will ensure that there's no anhydrous vapors left in there. All right, so I just hand threaded that plug in there. If it leaks, we'll have to get a wrench. It's got to come out. So um, we need to get all the anhydrous stickers off of here as well. Get this one off and just kind of clean it up. So I wasn't, I don't intend to paint the whole tank, but we might paint the tank at some point. I mean, we probably will at some point, but we got to get all the anhydrous labels off because we're not using it for anhydrous anymore and they don't need to be on there. So, and we could use a wire wheel and clean up all the chipped, chipping paint and stuff so that it's a little smoother at least nicer I don't know it's it's fine it's just we need to get the anhydrous stickers off and if we're gonna do that we might as well keep going well I took my angle grinder with a wire wheel on it and we uh, knocked all the flaky paint off 
it does not work very good on decals. So we're gonna have to figure something else out there. We're still filling. I stick my new gauge in just to see how full we are. We're almost up to 50%, but it's lunchtime and I'm gonna go eat. So we're gonna have to shut it off till we come back. I'm debating about making a trip to town to take that the engine parts in today. Well, I took the engine block and the head and put them in the back of my truck. I don't know that there's anything else that we need to take. I, I, mean, I don't think they need the pan. I can clean that up. I'm capable. The camshaft, crankshaft. I don't know. We're going to start with what I got. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing on this project, um, but we're going to figure it out. Again, if you don't know, it's a uh, 1938 uh, Farmall F12 that was my grandpa's or likely great grandpa's that um, hasn't run since the 60s and I'm going to attempt to make it run again. So good project to learn on because I'm not really out much if it doesn't ever run again. We'll start there. Ugh. Taking the Chevy so that I can take it and get the uh, codes read on it and see if we can figure out why I'm occasionally having starting issues. I think it's fuel pump. My uh, mechanic thinks it's an ignition switch, says that's common on these. So we'll see, I gotta wash my hands. All right, well, we got our engine components dropped off and I have good news and I have bad news for you guys. The good news is he said it was in really good condition for everything that he's ever seen or different ones that he has seen, mostly because it sat inside for 60 years, not out in the fence row that we're trying to save it from. So no visual cracks or breaks or anything but it's not cleaned up yet, so um, that's good. We're, we're in good shape. And he thinks he can get me liners and pistons and some of the other stuff probably cheaper than I can buy them online. Also a very good thing. The problem is I asked him for, just asked him in a ballpark timeline knowing that they're busy, and I said, are we talking a month or are we talking six months? And he says, we aren't going to look at it in the next month. And, okay. <laughs> so um, I have no idea when we'll get it back. It may be July. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter. This is a long-term project anyway, so it is what it is. We'll be fine. Um, but I am excited that he's going to get that cleaned up, and I at least have a source to help me out and get some parts and do things relatively reasonable. So, yeah, that's where we're at. All right, now i got to get the, uh, the, the check engine light red on my truck here, figure out what's wrong with that, and then we'll go back and find something else to do. Ignition switch. We're pretty confident it's an ignition switch issue because that's what some of the codes said. Uh, voltage problems and such. And I know the battery was dead at one point because I tried starting it too many times and it was cranking and not starting. And I, Anyway, apparently there's two power supplies that come out of the ignition switch and then one of them can go bad and then it causes other things to not work because you're not getting power to half the fuse panel basically. I don't know. That's what we're gonna start with. So he's gonna get me parts to fix my, or to change the ignition switch. Which, by the way, if anybody is close to Bryan, Ohio and you need some service work done, go to St. John Tire. They're good people there. That's my father-in-law. Okay, well, we're back in the shop. I turned the water back on so we can get that finished filling up. Uh, we, got a, we got a flat tire over there. I pumped this one up. We're going we're gonna to fix those. It's finally got weight on it. It hasn't had weight yet. And I was just checking the pressure on this one. Look at this. <laughs> this is not right. You should not attach tires with bolts and washers and regular nuts. Not like <laughs> they just stuck bolts through the back of the hub. That's not right. That's not right. It doesn't matter for my purposes, but oof, I would not want to be pulling this thing up and down the road with anhydrous with that system on there. <laughs> This is what it's supposed to have with actual bolts that thread into the hub, not bolts going through the hub with nuts on the outside. That's, that's wrong. That's better. I think this tire is oversized too. It looks wider than the others. Let's see, what do we got here? 11L15. Eleven L fifteen SL. Uh, maybe not. Doesn't that one look wider on the back than the front? I don't know what the SL means. I don't see anything on here. It's got to be there somewhere. 
Well, that one's a 9.5 L15. This one's an 11 L15 SL. I don't, whatever. Doesn't matter. Like I said, for our purposes, it doesn't matter. So you just have to hold some air. Aha! All right. Well, it's full. Now the fun part. I put my gauge in just so I could see. Oh, I already told you that. It's full. Now the fun part. We pull the plug and let her drain. Parked very strategically, by the way. Think I can twist that out of there? Yep. Oh, it's going to go fast. Oh! Well, didn't expect it to splash. All right. Dang it. Just a little bit got me. Oh well. Water's clean coming out. That's a good sign. In case I haven't already told you, the point of this was to get all of the air and uh, potential anhydrous vapors out of the tank. I never smelled any coming out, so I think we were okay, and this was probably an unnecessary step, but safety first. You know, it would have been a fun but potentially expensive experiment taking that outside this week when it's going to be five degrees out and seeing what happens when it froze. Think it would burst the tank? I don't know. It might have, but it might not have. Trying a few different things on these decals. I got that decal remover that I used on the truck when we had to take our name off of it. And it works, but I'm going to wear it out. It does leave it a lot, you know, the paint underneath a lot nicer, but I've already screwed up the paint, so who cares? And it's really messy. But that's what happens when I use the grinder wheel. We grind through the paint and it's going to rust. And I'm going to have to paint it. I don't know. I kind of need to paint it anyway, though. We're making it look worse, but we're getting closer. Oh, water's out. Uh, for the most part, so we're just gonna let it drip and we need to get it totally dry inside which is a bit of a challenge Right, so the best I can do is just leave it set in here. So it's warm and it evaporates out um, But we need to get some uh, methanol put a little methanol in there that will absorb the water and get it out So I got some of the decals off. We got some more to keep going. Haven't done much on this side uh, Yeah We're getting there. We're getting there I got some of my valves. I think I said this already, but I haven't got them all. I'm waiting for more. I'm hoping they come this week and we can kind of get this wrapped up. Well, I've been spending a little more time working in front of the computer here. Um, I know I've been saying this for like three weeks now that I've been working on figuring out our starter out and I have pretty well figured it out. Um, just a matter of actually getting the product bought and uh, updating my spreadsheets. So that's what I'm working on now. Let me show you, I think, I don't think there's anything too sensitive here. This is, I mean, it's, it's fairly straightforward, but just let me show you my cool spreadsheet because okay, some of you like it. All right, so this is part of a much larger spreadsheet that has all kinds of tabs here and stuff. And um, we'll go to this tab. So this has got my starter stuff with what I am going to use in the products and I can tell you different rates and if I variable rate it and then it tells me how much of each nutrient I am getting out of that given rate. Um, like I said in a video the other day, I'm talking about doing some different stuff with starter with some two by two and some inferro. So then we get the combined here and all the different stuff and the cost of it, which is outrageous. But um, on this particular spreadsheet, you can see all of that stuff kind of laid out by field, how many acres, it calculates out how many gallons of the total product. And this rate is just a solid rate. When I get ready to make um, scripts, prescription maps, that might change a little bit up or down, which will change all of these other numbers and stuff. But at the base rate of 15 gallons in my two by two, like in, in this particular 45 and a half acre field, it will need 684 gallons of starter. 137 of that will be 10340, 228 will be ATS, uh, 308 of uh, 28 for some nitrogen, we'll have 11 gallons of a zinc source, and then for the inferral that we're adding, um, whatever line we were on, these are the four different products that will, or no, we've got the total gallons and then the three different products that will be in there. Uh, at different rates and then this is my anhydrous this will change for sure but I just put a mid rate of 165 on there and how many tons of uh, anhydrous will need and then it calculates out totals for me and uh, yeah that's a that's a fun little spreadsheet 
The most very observant of you may glean some information out of that little spreadsheet that I should not share with you, but good luck. We'll see how you do. Anyway, I'm going home. I think Brock's coming tomorrow. I think that's what we said last week when he was here. I'm not 100% sure. Um, plan is to keep working on stickers on this tank a little bit. And uh, we need to get the, the old black pickup truck. Phil's old truck. The old Chevy. Um, serviced. It's needed an oil change for a while. So I think I'm going to have Brock work on that, which means I'll have to go and get a filter and stuff in the morning. Oil. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll work on that in here and uh, see what else we can come up with to do tomorrow. I'm struggling a little bit right now, but we've got enough meetings on Wednesday. I've got a lot of stuff going on, so we're probably not going to make a video on Wednesday. It just is what it is. Um, it's going to be cold tomorrow, too, so that's no fun. But it is what it is. And we'll start putting some valves and stuff on here. I've got, got stuff over there. I was just letting it dry out as much as possible. Um, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you guys tomorrow.